everyone, it's Mark with the World's Okayest Farmer and I've had a lot of people question me on my how to make money with a dump trailer, which is doing pretty good. And people ask me how I advertise, what kind of insurance I need, what I've done with my business. So in my first year of business, I did about $80,000 in revenue sales. This year is my second year in business. I jumped up to 250,000 in sales. I'm at the point, you know, I had uh, two drivers, well, two and a part-time, so like, well, they're all part-time, but I had three drivers and a scheduler working for me. So after I got those employees on, it's dead in the winter, so I can't really employ anybody through the winter except for some firewood sales that I do. But I wanna talk about the business end of things and I've learned a lot more in my first year of business to uh, expand in my second year. And I wanna talk to you about advertising, insurance, LLCs, things like that that I've done that would be important if you're starting your business. And uh, I'm at the point where I, this year, if we keep expanding like we did last year, I can put a third truck on and hire another driver. I have a gravel yard that I'm putting in. It's not up and running yet, but we're still working on it. But uh, I'm going to show you some pictures of some jobs that I've done and explain the, uh, the ins and outs of my business. All right, so I'm going to get into the meat and potatoes of how I have been running my business and what's been working for me to basically triple my income in the second year of business. So I feel that's pretty good. Some people might uh, think that this that's not very good, or uh, I don't claim to know uh, business very well. It's just what I've done and what's been working for me. So I figured I'd share because I've had a lot of people ask certain things about the business and how it was ran, not exactly, or not what my business is per se, but how I manage certain things. So. Uh, we'll get into it, and I'll probably bounce around, so bear with me, okay? Uh, first thing is, um, whenever I first started my business, I started as a DBA, so doing business as. So I was a sole proprietor doing business as MK Hauling. So um, it worked for me, and you can do that, uh, but I, if I'd known now what I should have known then or however you want to say that uh, I would have started the LLC my first year uh, it wasn't very expensive uh, some people pay people to do it there's um, programs online where people take your money to do it but if you watch a YouTube video and look up your state you can figure it out I did it in a couple of hours probably less than that I think I filled out the form in probably 15 minutes but um, just to figure everything out, uh, it was pretty quick, but and it was pretty inexpensive. I feel like I paid less than a hundred dollars to form the LLC, and uh, like I said, I'm no legal expert or anything. Uh, I just think the LLC gives you a little bit more protection, to where if something happens with your business, depending on what your business is, mine's hauling dump trucks. So, God forbid, a dump truck hits somebody and kills them. Uh, somebody could come after me and if everything gets depleted in my business uh, they could come after my personal um, assets so I think an LLC is kind of a protection um, it separates yourself from the business whereas doing business as it's basically under myself so I feel like like I said, don't take this for any legal advice, but I, I think that I could be my personal belongings they could go after. So the LLC would be a smart thing to start with. Um, I got a EIN number. Uh, that's your uh, tax identifier, I do believe, your EIN. Uh, you have to have that as a business. They always ask for it. Pretty much everything goes off of that EIN number. You can... Um, file for that. I believe that's the federal. Uh, you go on the federal website and apply for that. You'd have to look it up, but the EIN number. Um, and then I did my state sales tax, set that up, so I have to pay that monthly. Um, 
And yeah, so that pretty much covers that. I don't want to get too far into it and make this video too long. Um, next, advertising was huge this year, this past year. Um, one thing I do is placemats. And my area is a small town, so um, you might not have this in a city or something like that. But small areas like this, the restaurants around, they buy all these placemats. And on the placemats are advertisements for different local businesses. So I think a lot of smaller towns kind of do that, but it's probably different in every area. So anyways, my wife uh, is a business owner. She has a successful uh, chiropractic business and so she has showed me a bunch of things along the way because otherwise I would have been lost so she kind of was like you need to get this do that so I you know went about that stuff but um, with the placemats I advertise in a couple towns around here that I service so it roughly costs me $120 to get on the placemat and the placemats I th that's for a few thousand placemats so usually it's quarterly I would say so I probably pay that about four times a year and I get on two placemats I'm probably gonna get on a third that's in the local area and that's through somebody she knew and uh, now I know so that helps out uh, another thing we did was I, I'm a couple local bar and restaurants in the area have uh, the same thing advertisements that are in the tabletops and uh, we got into that it was a little bit more expensive but it's a three-year contract and it was around we waited till the end so you get a you get a deal uh, when they're trying to fill spaces at the end because they're on a time crunch I want to say that cost around 1800 bucks so um, you get your advertisements on the table. It's pretty nice color advertisement, and it's local. So uh, my business is local, and it's just good to get your name out there and grow. So next, um, after the placemats, um, business cards. So I made initially I made my own business cards and just cut them out of hard stock paper hand them out, I hand them out with every slip so when we do a delivery we give them their slip, we give them a business card um, I just recently oh, I have some here got uh, magnets, they're magnet business cards get the thicker ones so they don't roll, I got the cheaper ones first and they like fold up so if you get the thicker ones they're like I want to say 17 cents a piece um, they hold up better but it's a magnet people throw it on their fridge and then they're like need gravel they have your number on the fridge just a good deal um, the magnet business cards I really like that we give them out with every load with the slip uh, I think that helps out a lot and also I have those in my vehicle anytime I'm going anywhere if I'm in a gas station or any business a lot of them have bulletin boards I always pin one up on the bulletin board. You could pin more than one so people could take them, but I always try to put one every time I'm around a bulletin board in the local area just so people see it and uh, get your name out there. Uh, word of mouth has been huge. Now that I've been in business for two years, a lot of people tell me, oh, so-and-so told me about you or, or so-and-so referenced you. So. Word of mouth is getting real huge, and if you do a good job, that also helps a lot. And even if you have a screw-up, we've had a couple issues, um, just make it right. Go, I always try to, if somebody's unhappy, I talk to them, see what it would take to make them happy. Maybe a little bit more material, maybe it was the wrong type of material that they uh, received or wanted, and you can, you know, maybe take them a little bit more material, take some money off, whatever. Uh, usually makes them happy and it goes a long way. There's been a couple times that I've had people that were just unhappy and I've tried to, you know, make things better, give them discounts and stuff, and they were just not having it. And I think that they're just not happy individuals because I tried. Uh, I always try to make everybody happy and make the job right. Uh, next, uh, with my business, we have commercial trucks. So DOT physicals we have to have. We don't have CDLs because we're just under the 26,000 pounds. 
but we can't put a trailer on the back of the dump trucks or you, or you would need a CDL. So DOT physicals are required. I found a place that does them. They're like $75 a pop. Uh, if the person's working for me, I cover that expense. Some A lot of people that apply already have them. They're good for two years usually. Uh, some people are on a restricted one year, but that's pretty simple. Um, next, we'll talk about insurance. I get a lot of questions about insurance. I have um, a liability insurance, so that's pretty much a million dollar coverage, and it's not very expensive. Uh, I got one quote that was pretty expensive, and then my second quote was very affordable, and it's through a, a good insurance company, and they're really good to work for, or work with. I shouldn't say work for, but um, the the liability isn't very expensive, so shop around. Um, next, with the insurance on my trucks, I have commercial insurance, so that would cover your vehicles if they're in an accident. I have that on you know my mini excavator dump trailers trucks all uh, the commercial it's not very expensive either per truck or however you look at it and like dump trailer I thinks fifty dollars a year so not bad um, insurance is pretty simple but shop around because I've, I've seen some like high insurance rates and I have pretty cheap insurance rates with you know good companies like Erie Insurance here is a, more of a local one I think and then State Farm so that pretty much covers insurance uh, advertising okay, I told you a little bit about placemats we'll jump back to that the huge thing for me is Facebook is how I've done probably 85 to percent of my marketing has been on Facebook when I initially started I was just doing Facebook marketplace and putting free ads up um, it kinda goes against Facebook standard it's you know face you're supposed to be just selling personal items not really running a business so you have to watch how you word things and everything but I was just basically advertising five tons at the time five tons of gravel and uh, here's the price delivered and then I got a lot of business that way I would share it you know every week I would renew it or delete it post new stuff with pictures of work jobs and work that I was doing and uh, that seemed to go very well uh, and then to expand this year which was huge this was a big thing if you have a local business I would recommend um, I made my business Facebook page and uh, I started um, paying small amounts of money it adds up over the year so I ended up spending a good bit of money but uh, every week you know I would throw ten bucks at an ad and uh, ten bucks it might add up but when you're making a lot of money in loads it ten dollars you know was nothing so I made my uh, Facebook business page and then I would share the you can share your your name your business pay a little bit of money on that and it'll you can select the demographics so you can pick uh, this age group of people and, and these areas so I would put the towns around here so I'm not advertising like down in the city of Pittsburgh um, I'm advertising in my local area so the people in this area are seeing it and your money's going uh, more direct so I know if you use Facebook and you see these ads pop up all the time sometimes it's kind of annoying but uh, it really helps, uh, especially a small business like myself. So with that, I would throw money at ads every week. I would usually run different ones, limestone, river rock, topsoil, and that has been huge for me. That's, that's done a lot uh, for my business, for sure. Uh, big growth, uh, and I will continue to do that. But you also have to think, there's a lot of people that aren't on Facebook, a lot of older people and even especially now with the politics you have a lot of people deleting their their accounts so um, but there's still a lot of people that use it and then those people word of mouth get out the people that don't use it so you just gotta get your name out of there one thing that oh, you get your name out there one of the things I'm thinking about doing is um, I wanna get on a local radio station there's like a country 
radio around here that does a lot of advertisements for small businesses. I want to look and see how expensive that is because I think that would be really good for me in the local area. But um, yeah, I got to check into that, but that's definitely something to consider. So that pretty much does it for advertising. Facebook has been huge. When I started, I used Craigslist. And then Craigslist pretty much dried up. I mean, you can still go on there and find stuff, but I've advertised on there just trying it out. And I have got, I used to get work off of there. I've got zero work off of there. So I don't think very many people are using that. But that also, keep in mind if there's any new platforms out there where you can sell things, maybe Angie's List or whatever they call them. I don't know. Um, there's other opportunities probably out there as well to where you can advertise your and this goes for all businesses. My business is hauling gravel and dirt, and uh, now I do light excavation with my mini excavator and everything, putting people's driveways in, putting new driveways in. Um, uh, I enjoy it. It's a side business for me. I have people that work for me because I can't do it all. It's very busy, and I work full time. But yeah, that's that. I'll talk about what's going on now. I'm in the process of well having a website designed and there's a lot that goes into that website des design can be very expensive or you can get a reasonable price so what I did my wife told me about this program on the internet called Upwork and Upwork you can do all kinds of different things a website's just one of them and you put your job out there with a description of what you want and people bid on it <clears throat> so um, on Upwork I bid I needed a, a business website made and something that can be passed on to me so I can take over you know and change prices edit pictures so that is what is in the process right now and like I said I've gotten prices from people before where it's like five hundred dollars to make a website um, this one Upwork I actually got this done for a hundred and fifty dollars which is really cheap and Somebody, I, they, on there, you can also, some people put websites in up where you can go see them and see work that they've done, so I like that. And the person that I went with, I looked at websites they made, and they were really nice. So I went with them, and it turns out they're actually, like, professional website designers. They just are trying to establish um, a portfolio for Upwork, so they're doing the work like pro bono you could say so I'm getting a good rate for kind of quality work so check that out there's other ones you can make your own on Wix or whatever but there, that's a whole nother thing you can watch YouTube videos on how to make websites and figure all that stuff out but so I'm getting this website made so I can attach it to my Google search when people look me up they can go to my website have all that information and the big thing is now um, because I was paying a schedule scheduler last year, I'm going to get the, there's this, there's different apps. I'm going to try to get this app where I'm going to put it on my web page. People can go on there and order materials, and you'll have block times set up, different days of the week, so they can schedule their delivery, and uh, so they can go on there. They can pick the different items they want, schedule delivery online on your website and I am hoping to cut out like actually having to have somebody to answer the phone because um, it's a it's a pretty big expense where the apps a lot cheaper um, overall so I'm hoping that works out for me um, my wife told me about it and there's some other businesses that have used something similar to this so I'm going that's the main drive for getting the website made so I can get this app on there where people can go and order material on my website and hopefully cut out having to have a scheduler because I can't do it I, I work night shift a lot sleep during the day uh, it's it's just kind of impossible when you're trying to sleep to have it the phone rings all day in the summertime um, I made a lot of money with uh, excavation my equipment isn't very expensive and that's pretty much your only cost other than fuel and my mini runs on very little fuel so it's just your time um, and you, so it's very profitable most of the the money you get to keep where gravel I have a lot of expenses fuel maintenance on the trucks and uh, and buying the material 
So, excavation, I make a lot more money than gravel, but um, building up and you know excavation, I'm not super experienced, and I can't, I don't have big equipment. The other thing I'm doing is um, I'm building a, a gravel yard in our field. It's on kind of a, it's not super busy road, but two main roads. So I'm putting a gravel yard over there with the bunks and everything to keep gravel. And that's a whole nother thing. One, I have a lot of people that call me and want to pick up gravel or come and see it. So they could come with their pickup trucks. I can sell them, you know, a bucket load. I'm getting a four foot bucket for my tractor so I can load small pickup trucks. Not my seven foot bucket where it would be dumping over the tailgate. And I'll have it all predetermined, like the bucket load, I'll go weigh it, should be around a ton. And I can sell a bucket load of material and go that route and make more money that way to the do-it-yourself type people. Uh, I also want to get the yard signs. Probably start out with just 10 or so and put them around different places that get a lot of traffic. But uh, just getting your name out there is big. And uh, also in my plans, I have the two, um, well, they're six-ton dump trucks I can put on them, F650s. And uh, it's a good market because, you know, triaxles and everything, they can give you, so if I'm hauling, say, 21, or actually even 22 to 24 tons, a triaxle load's usually going to be cheaper than what I can do it for because it takes me four trips with all that hauling and everything. A triaxle load can do it in one. Uh, typically it's cheaper, sometimes I can match them, but I want to sell one of my six ton trucks and get a 10 ton truck, but I have to get my CDL, so I'm working on that, and then uh, I'll have to hire somebody, at least one person that has a CDL to drive for me, but I want to get a 10 ton truck just because we get a lot of jobs even though I run 6 ton trucks I get a lot of jobs that are 4 plus loads where if I had a 10 ton I could actually do it a little bit cheaper and make more money and uh, do less trips so I'm wanting to get at least like one 10 ton truck and keep my 6 ton I'd like to get a small 1 ton dump also for smaller jobs and going off road you know, people want you to take stuff up in the yard. Our trucks don't go well off-road. Um, so a lot of times I still use my dump trailer for jobs like that. If somebody has something out in the yard, it's kind of soft. We can't, If we take the dump trucks, they just get stuck in the yard. Uh, I'll take it in the dump trailer and dump it with my dump trailer. So I still use my dump trailer. I have that how to make money with a dump trailer. That's how I started. Then last year ran the dump trailer and a dump truck I got and then halfway through the year I bought a second dump truck so I used the dump trailer a little bit less this year was so busy we ran the dump trucks pretty much both of them all day Monday through Friday and then I or sometimes I even ran my truck and dump trailer so very busy this year I was at the point max capacity where I could actually put a third uh, dump truck on it's very it's been picking up business has been great we get a lot of rain after the rains and mud wash out people's driveways I get a, a lot of phone calls and uh, keeps keeps us really busy so it's it's great even through the coronavirus uh, pandemic uh, nothing really slowed down uh, more people were home we actually got more busy I would say with everyone working from home and everything so trying to think if there's anything else here just looking over my notes I tried to make some key notes to talk about I talked about uh, how I started with just a dumb trailer and my pickup truck just doing some side cash and then I turned it into a legitimate business and then I didn't I want I needed people driving for me because I don't have the time to do it full time so I got into the dump trucks because I didn't want people driving my truck and dump trailer it can be uh, a little hairy sometimes so um, the dump trucks are much safer and easier and it's been good how it's worked out so 
I still use the dump trailer and more so hauling equipment. It's great when you have the excavator or skid steer, you can dump your material right in the dump trailer, all that. But it still has its place, but I'm getting more into the dump trucks. And But I started with the dump trailer. It was definitely a, a great uh, deal. Very useful. So, um... I think that kind of concludes everything. That's pretty much what I've been doing. I'm trying to think if I missed any key things. Um, I just got QuickBooks because I kept te I kept track of everything on uh, Excel spreadsheets. And um, the wife, she uses uh, QuickBooks. So I'm just buying into that to hopefully be more organized so I can just take pictures of receipts and everything, link my bank accounts and uh, organize better because at the end of the year it's a nightmare especially this past year with how much work we did um, I have a lot to go through to get everything organized for taxes so hopefully with QuickBooks it can organize it as you go and the end of the year can be way more um, organized so I think that pretty much covered everything with my business uh, I mean there's always a lot more to it but that covered a lot of the key things people always ask me about insurance and people always ask me about how I advertise feel free to go on Facebook and look at my um, Facebook page it's MK Hauling um, and you can see some of my ads and how I do it I always put new pictures and just update everything and I, I usually I put the price of everything on there for the most part and it's been working well for me. My phone rings off the hook all summer. Business has been great. So I hope this helps you. I hope this information is uh, valuable for you. It's worked for me. It's been, an, it's been a learning experience. Like I said, I started out some things like the DBA, doing business as. I wish I would have started the LLC. You do it yourself. Don't pay somebody to do it. Save money where you can. Um, but yeah, I've... I uh, I did a lot more business last year. I was very surprised, and I think this year is going to be even bigger. And uh, I have to think I have to charge a little bit more because I need to pay my guys a little bit more money. Especially uh, here, talks a minimum wage going to fifteen dollars an hour. So um, you know, ultimately, when you have to make money, so you have to raise your prices to cover costs and need good help that you can retain because if you're paying them just uh, the minimum dollar you're gonna be uh, dealing with some problems and people are gonna be leaving all the time so yeah we'll have to see that's a uh, pricing uh, you might have questions on that it's a whole formula it's a video in itself of figuring out how to charge people I kinda have my own formula of how I do it to figure out to where I make money uh, usually, you know, a lot of people were happy with my prices, but I feel like I was underpriced in the past. But then again, I look at it and I'm like, yeah, that's kind of expensive. I don't know. Still trying to figure that one out, but it's been working for me so far. Uh, and the other thing I'm trying to figure out is uh, trucks. Uh, I run two older trucks. Uh, lower miles, they have lower mileage on them, but we rack up a lot of miles. I mean, I feel like I put about uh, thirty to forty thousand miles on the trucks a year, and um, just the maintenance has been crazy. So, I mean, I spent I spent enough money in maintenance between both trucks to buy one of them outright. So, uh, I'm trying to figure out what the best deal is there. If you buy a newer truck that's under warranty, your payments are really high, but if your old trucks are broke all the time, uh, it evens out there so it's kind of uh, I'm trying to figure that one out and I'll make a video when I do but thinking maybe middle of the road not the cheaper older trucks but a few years old middle of the uh, the road price range maybe that's the key so I'm still uh, I'm still trying to figure that one out but once I think I have a good uh, concept I'll share it but um, I hope this video helps you and gives you some business insight like I said I'm no business expert just uh, sharing what I've done and what's working for me but um, please subscribe to this channel 
my channel's about all different things because I do a lot of different things. There's farming, which is a hobby, passion of mine, but um, the hauling side of things and some maintenance videos. I just, whatever I'm doing, I, we have a lot of land here and maintaining it and projects that go on here. Uh, I just share it all. So it might not all be for you, but there's a lot of stuff that you might enjoy. So uh, subscribe and stay with me. All right, thanks.